welcome back everyone. On today's video, we're going to cover the Frobenius method, uh, which is pretty similar to the power series. So if you watch the other videos on power series, um, then it's a topic that will follow. So just like the power series, this method of Frobenius is used to solve ODEs by approximation. Um, we basically start with the definition of Y, which you can see from the next uh, animation that it is slightly different from the power series one. So this is the power, the power series. You can see we have the summation of A. Um, I mean, this is the, the Frobenius series. You can see it's different because we have that R that's included. And we're gonna go uh, the differences in a little bit in the next slide. Um, and you can see that the solution, it's still the summation, but this time it's multiply everything times X to the R. So to find that R, uh, we need to solve the initial equation uh, and solving for the roots, which is gonna be the R. And depending on the roots, we can get two different cases, which will determine what are actually two solutions will be for this one, Y1 and Y2. So uh, I'll show you in a little bit what I, that question will be, but depending on the roots, we can get case one where the root one and two, they differ by less than an integer, meaning a whole number. Uh, so if that the difference is, let's say, half a number, a quarter, any other decimal, whatever, if it's less than an integer, you have a case one, where basically your y1 and y2 doesn't really matter uh, which one you choose for your r1 and r2. Uh, so technically, for these cases, in some of them, it might matter which one you choose to be your r1 and r2, but at least if you get a case one where they differ by less than an integer, it doesn't really matter much. You can choose whichever one, I usually personally choose uh, R1 to be um, here, the one that's gonna make the problem the easiest. For example, if you get one of the roots to be zero, I will tend to use that one for my solution one. We have a case two in which both uh, basically roots are the same. And if that happens, you can see that our solution one is pretty much the same, but my solution two will depend on my solution one. But since the roots are the same, Technically, once again, it doesn't matter which one you, you will select as which. And then for case three, uh, we had that root one and root two, they differ by more than an integer. And this one, we have to make sure that root one has to be bigger than root two. So whichever one you choose, make sure that it is the case where the R1 is bigger than the R2. Or when you subtract these two, it's still a number greater than zero. So in this case for uh, Y1, you can see it's the whole summation times X to the R1, and our solution two will depend on whatever our solution one actually was. So it is important then that you do know which one is your R1 and your R2, All right? So let's see an example. Oh, but before that, uh, let me show you real quick then the difference between the power series and the Frobenius. Side by side, you can see here the power series, and you will see all the definitions that we used before. And then on the right side, you see the how they differ, the Frobenius. You can see they have slightly different uh, things. So right away, you can see that the first definition for Y, uh, both of them start with M equals to zero. But while the power series goes to M equals to one, starts the, the index starts at M equals one, Frobenius method, keeps it at zero. And then when the y double prime for power series starts at m equals two, Frobenius for y double prime also start equal to zero. So you can see power series start zero, one, and two as you increase the derivative, but the Frobenius method, all of the indices start at m equals zero. So that's a key difference and it's really important that you know that otherwise your problem is gonna be uh, wrong if you don't use this uh, parameters. Another thing you can see the difference is that the power of the X is just not M, it's M plus R, and that also affects the derivative. So the next one we're gonna get, instead of N minus one, we have M plus R minus one. And also for the second one, instead of M minus two, we have M plus R minus two. So notice those differences. I'm sure that you distinguish between them. They can see they're not that drastic, but they do make a change in the problem in the fact that Power series only has one solution, while for Venus method has two solutions depending on your roots for R. Okay, so let's solve this problem. We have X times Y double prime plus five Y prime plus X Y equals to zero. 
So as always, my first step is to write my definitions. So here I have my definition for the Frobenius method for y, y prime, and y double prime. Uh, usually these, these ones are given by the book, or you can memorize them, whatever, but you always should have the definition available for you. And just like the power series, the procedure is exactly the same. So my first step I will do is I will substitute the y double prime, the y prime, and the y, for the corresponding definitions, just like I did here. You can see I just copied them down, didn't change anything. We you have the x outside, we have that five, and the other x for the y also still outside. So now I want to get rid of them. We want to bring them inside the summation. So basically for the first x, x if we bring it inside, since the power of x equals, it's, it's just a one. When we bring it in, you can see that my power goes from being a negative two m plus r minus 2 goes to be m plus r minus 1 because that x that was brought inside. Now for the second one, that 5, since it's just a coefficient, it just goes in uh, next to the multiplication, doesn't really change, doesn't change the power. And then the last one, we have that final x. If we bring it inside, once again, this x has a power of 1. If it goes inside, it's going to change our uh, powers from m plus r to m plus r plus 1. And now this way I took care of all the terms that might be outside of the summations. And now is when I can start doing my index shifting. So for index shifting, I will only focus on the powers, but I will not take into account the R. So for the first one, S equals to N minus one, as we get it from the power. And if we solve for M, we're gonna get that M is equal to S plus one. Second one, we get S equals to M minus one as well, where if we solve for M, we're gonna get M is equal to S plus one. And then the last one, we're gonna get that S is equal to M plus one. And then solving for M, we get S minus one. So you can see if we rewrite everything, the whole equation's on top, but in terms of S, substituting every M for S plus one or and uh, respectively, we're going to get our equations there, s plus 1 plus r times s plus r times a sub s plus 1 times x to the s plus r. Notice how we didn't get rid of the r. It's still there. We got rid of the m minus 1, but the r is still there. And also notice the index that it starts at negative 1. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, so to get that negative 1, you can see basically we plug in that 0. So we can see the first one, m equals 0. We plug it into that box equation. So S equals zero minus one, and therefore that solution, negative one, it's given there for this new index. The next one we have five times S plus one plus R times A sub S plus one times X to the S plus R. And similarly, in order to know what index we're starting with, we plug in the index of M equals zero. We plug it in into the box equation of S equals M minus one correspond corresponding to that uh, summation and plug in zero for M and the value we're gonna get, it's also negative one and we write it as our new index. And then the last one, we have uh, just A S, so A sub S minus one. And you can see that we are going to, once again, plug that M equals to zero into more box green equation. And if that's the case, then we get that S is equal to positive one, which is what we have here. So that is where the index comes from whenever you're rewriting everything. So remember, the indices might change. In some cases, it might not, but always keep in mind where you are finding your indexes from. Okay, so now that we did this, we're going to start with our uh, finding the constants. So we're going to start first with the lowest value, which will be S negative 1. So when S is equal to negative 1, plug in negative 1 into all of those uh summations, at least for the first two terms that do start negative one, you can see that my last term, it starts at s equals to one. So we're not going to add that one yet. So doing this, we can simplify. We're gonna, you can see that this one, we are including the r's. And whenever we solve and, and get everything clean, we're going to get r times negative one plus r times a naught. Uh, I think I might have forgotten another a naught uh, in here. But uh, it should still be there. Just keep that in mind. I think I forgot it here, but it, it's still an A naught in there. Um, 
Either way, it will be factored out, just like it happened here. So once again, there should be an A naught in here, in, in here, in front of the 5R. Uh, but in the next step, it's already taken care of because basically we want to factor them out. So just, just keep that note there. Um, so this, in the middle, we simplify. It simplifies to R squared plus 4R. And we have that A naught plus R squared plus, I mean, A naught times R squared plus 4R equals to zero. We cannot have A naught to be equal to zero, right? Because it's part of our solution. So in order for A naught to not be zero, it means that the R squared plus 4R, it's what needs to be zero. And that in purple or magenta, it's what it's known as, as the initial equation. So then it's this equation that will tell us what kind of case do we have, what are the roots we're going to get, and so on. So this is how we get our initial equation. You can see this step is the only one that's added extra to everything that we have done before in power series. This step is just what basically separates for venus from power series in the process. So let's solve for the roots, factor out an R, solve for the roots, and we get R1 to be zero and R2 to be negative four. This is a case three because zero will be greater than negative four, uh, right? Uh, and thus, that's the one I'm going to choose. So once again, it's a case three, because also they differ by more than one integer. So now what I do is basically I will do my first solution. So for R equals, for R1 equals to zero, I'm basically going to plug that zero into my equation on top in whites with the S plus R. And for every R, I'm basically going to write a zero. So my equation will now look like this. So we have now uh, basically a power series problem. It just, it's turned into a power series for this step. You can see there are no more R's. Um, let's say the R1 would have been another another number, not a zero. Then you would have there X to the S plus five or X to the S minus four or whatever. It will still be there in the powers, but not in the parentheses. The parentheses basically we just would update it with whatever number we have, and it will just turn into a power series. So this is power series. Once again, we find the constants with the next we already did s negative one. So now we're gonna do s equals to zero. Plug it in. We still have only first two steps, the only first two summations, I mean. And we have the a1 equals to zero from this one. Do the next step. Now all three summations can be uh, basically added. And we're going to get from here solving a2 equals to negative a0 over 12. Do one more step. We're going to, once again, we have our three summations. And we get a3 to be equal to 0. Do one more. And from here, we're going to get a4 to be equals to a0 over 384. So let's start with steps for now. You can see the more we do, the, that number in the bottom will start getting a bit really big. Um, so you can see once again from the beginning, the definition for y in the Schrodinger's method is the following in green. And this corresponding solution will look something like that in white. So with all those four uh, constants, we're going to plug it in into our solution. So you can see y1 is equals to x to the r1, which in this case was 0. So that whole x can be just, this is going to go to 1. It's going to become a constant. And you can see how we're replacing every single one of our um constants a1, a2, a3, and a4, or, uh, respectively. So we're going to do that. We can simplify. And basically, this is my general solution for iy1. Now, my next step, if asked, will be to find my y2. I basically would go back to the part where I'm substituting the r for negative 4. I will pl plug that in. My equation in y will change. And then I will do the constants again to find whatever those new constants are. And now I will write my corresponding y2 solution based on this. So this, this kind of uh, problems can be longer because the whole doing it twice. But other than that, they're pretty straightforward. They're pretty simple. They don't require that much sophistication to do. So that's it on this problem. I hope uh, it was helpful. And as always, good luck.